Now let's be honest, no one thinks this is actually going to happen, but that's not the debate. Hello, Emmett Ryan from Ball in Europe here, and we try to make videos that are reasonably evergreen, but this one's got a clear short shelf life because Game 3 is Tuesday night and this is going out Monday morning. So we better get into it. Uh, Partizan are in an impossible position, an unfair position, one that is only marginally of their own making and really, being honest, of the EuroLeague office's making and their decision. So let's get into it. So for those who aren't aware, there was a very, very, very big fight at Game 2 in Madrid between Real Madrid and Partizan. The long and the short is Sergio Yui did a hard foul. Kevin Punter, for one of a better way of doing it, broke up on Yui. It should have just been a pull apart at that stage. Went into a crazy brawl. Gerson Yabaseli with what to me was sort of like a uh, old fashioned, like, you know, double arm lock, uh, sort of, you know, neck lock. Uh, so was, what you call it? Is it, a, is, it, is it a neck lock or... It's basically an underarm collarbone lock type thing, but for both. And so anyway, he does that and woof, down into the left, Dante Exum. So that's uh, Gareth Shaw suspended for five games, obviously. Dante injured for the foreseeable, which is terrible, just to be clear. And Gareth Shaw's suspension does seem a bit on the light side. Let, we're not going to ignore that. Don't worry, partisan fans. Uh, but we're talking more about you and how you're being unfairly treated rather than what's actually happening on the Madrid side. So just to be clear, we're not ignoring Gareth Shaw. We're focusing on the problem you face here. And so what is the problem? The problem is the specificity, specificity even, of Kevin Punter's suspension. It is two games. So two games from whenever. And if we were in the regular season, a two-game suspension, or even if we were at the very start of a playoff series, or even if, if we were one game into a playoff series, there's actually not much to debate with a two-game suspension. Like, you can say the rights or wrongs, but in terms of the impact of it, there's not much to debate. You know the exact games that Kevin Punter is going to miss. Like, we can argue all you like, feel free to do so in the comments, but before you argue in the comments, please subscribe. We do need to get those subs up. We've got to hit a thousand folks so YouTube starts paying us so we can do more videos like this. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. But at pretty much any other phase of the season, other than right now, if you suspend somebody for a certain number of games, you know the exact games they are going to miss. But Kevin Punter, we don't know that. And that's because we are in the elimination phase of a playoff series. Partizan are currently 2-0 up. Two big road wins, like real gut check moments at Real Madrid. Like, tremendous performances. Like, Game 2, obviously, they won more comfortably, even though it was called early. Game 1, guys, the entertainment y'all provided me, beautiful. Seriously, me as a neutral watching, that was great stuff. That's just me talking as a neutral fan. That was the entertainment I wanted. So thank you for that, just to be clear. And, no, we don't have that. So, Kevin Punter is very, very important for Partizan in any situation. Let's not dance around that. He's increased in importance when it looks like another guy who's pretty important for Partizan is going to be gone for the Final Four through injury uh, caused by the incident Mr. Punter was in. But Punter, as it stands now, could miss these particular sets of games. Games 3 and 4 of this series. Or, if Partizan win Game 3, Game 3 and then the semi-final of the Final Four. Now, I don't know about y'all, but, like, one of those is an elimination game for Partizan, and the other, no matter what happens in games three and four, is not an elimination game for Partizan. And frankly, I just don't think that's right. I think there should be clarity, specifically assigned games on that, and we're going to get to the solution, don't worry, on that. And I just don't like it. I think a two-game suspension, particularly when it's somehow what Punter did, is worth only 40% of the suspension of Yabuseli. See, I told the partisan fans we get to Gabu Yabuseli. Don't worry. It's a Gershon Yabuseli. Don't worry. Uh, you know, who's Gabu? I don't know any player called Gabu. Sorry, Gershon. That was just rude of me. Uh, but, you know, Yabuseli's offense was definitely more than two and a half times what Kevin Punter did. I don't think I'm really going to be saying anything shocking there. Uh, but, like, two games for Punter. Listen, if you had said to me, it's game three of this series, if the series goes to a fourth game, it's game four, and it's game one of the regular season next year, that's fine. If you had said to me, 
It's game three of this series, no matter what. He's back no matter what for game four, but he serves game one of next season. That's also fine. Because you've got specific, clear games locked in, guaranteed. Like, there are two options which, again, we're assuming no matter what, Kevin Punter gets a two-game two suspension here, Partizan fans. Work with me on this, please. You know the exact games he's going to miss and the exact value of those games. The problem here is value. Because, and let's not dance around it, Partizan are not going to do this. There is value in Partizan dropping the game on Tuesday because they will still be favoured to win the series if they win game four. And then they'll have punter back for the elimination game, their first elimination game that could come up during the suspension period in Kaunas. Like, to me, this is a mess your league made they didn't need to make. And you notice the solution I mentioned there. I didn't come up with that solution. Shane Larkin came up with that solution. Like, Shane, you know, brilliant baller, great, great star at EuroLeague level, has obviously had his time in the NBA as well, but uh, I think we'll say that Shane has certainly made his name on this side of the Atlantic, and I'm glad for it that we've got to enjoy Shane this much. But uh, his, resolu his solution, it's simple, it's clear, and I think it's the one EuroLeague should adopt. I don't think there should be any debate in that, because Game 4 is not guaranteed to happen. Yet the existence of Game 4 blurs the lines of what games Kevin Punter could miss. And I just don't think that's right. It puts Partizan in an impossible situation. They gain from losing. Like, you, they won't do it because it's Partizan, like, you know, or any club, really, but especially Partizan. Partizan's not going to lie down for anybody, especially at home. Uh, but, uh, you know, I kind of go, they shouldn't have to even think about that. That thought should not be one that is forced to enter their mind. That's how big a deal I think this is. The fact that the thought that the maths says it's better to lose a game should never enter the mind of any team in any situation. And if you can come up with a solution that prevents that from happening and you are in power, you should come up with that solution and use that solution. You should never allow even the thought of benefiting from losing to enter a team's mind if you can stop it. And here's why. Okay, it's not really why, but it's pretty important. Stark Arena is going to be lit on Tuesday, no matter what. And just to be clear, even if there hadn't been all that row, and I'm being nice with the word row here, I'm Irish, we understate things, folks. If an Irish person is using a euphemism for something, that's when you start to get worried. We refer to World War II as the emergency. Does the emergency sound that serious? No, that's what we called it. And we didn't just call it during World War II. It was the official state name until the late 90s, 80s, early 90s. There's an argument over 89, 94, which is the exact one. I tend to lean to 94, but I can see the 89 argument. But, a but the crucial part is, for most of the history of the Irish state, we didn't consider World War II to be World War II. We called it the emergency. When we dial things down, that's when you should get worried. If an Irish person says, that's not great. Usually something awful of the most awful kind has happened. That's what I'm saying. So it's not great that Partizan are in this situation. The row was not great at all. And yet, even if, say everything had gone blissfully in Madrid, not a single punch is thrown, not even a single blow-up happens. Like, you know what I mean? Never mind a blow-up. Like, your ring is going to be awesome. Like, your fans, we've seen it game in, game out this season. You bring the colour, you bring the noise, you bring the devotion, as your league likes to say. Y'all are it. And, like, you know, everybody who's watching around Europe, let me tell you, we love watching games in the Stark Arena when you're all playing. You really bring it. Much love. And that's the thing. Like, Partizan can't lie down for this game because their fans will be annoyed. And rightly so. And Partizan's players will be annoyed. Everybody at Partizan will be annoyed. Yet here they have a situation where they gain from lying down. That's stupid. Like, they shouldn't have to have that in their head. Like, you know, it is plausible Real wins game three. Don't get me wrong. But most of y'all watching this, and me, don't think it's going to happen. So we're left with a situation where Partizan get to the final four and are immediately down a second of two important players for their system. And I don't like that. I, I don't like that at all. If they'd even said, and again, this would have been excessive, just so we're clear, punter is done for the season in EuroLeague, would have obviously been far too excessive a punishment, but at least it would have removed doubt in a situation. It would have removed this mathematical, bizarro world we're in. 
Like, for my money, I think a one game for punter would have been more than ample. Um, you know, frankly, I would have even been questioning whether I give him a suspension. Like, especially given Sergio Yui is not getting suspended and kind of was the guy where it started. Like, and punter's actions, were they really worse than Yui's? Probably not. Were they two games worse than Yui's? Definitely not. Uh, like, I thought that was very odd, to be honest. Uh, so, yeah, obviously the length of suspension does bother me, but I'm going to assume, no matter what, there's a two-game suspension here because it's easier for how we're working stuff out. And, like, like Partizan have already, like, are down a player they shouldn't be down. Like, Dante Exum is out because of a situation that, you know, he shouldn't have been put in. Quite literally, physically put in. Very hard and heavy. And, yeah, this is where we're at here. Like, and, you know, it's not like... By the way, the Madrid fans are happy with what, how their team behaved. There was a brilliant piece. I really suggest you look it up. I'm going to try and find the link and put it actually in here. Actually, no, there's no try. I will find the link, put it in here to the marker piece by Jesus Sanchez. Fantastic stuff, especially as I don't speak Spanish. Google Translate did a great job on this. Uh, and it still carried it because you should be most worried about how angry somebody is when they don't raise their voice. And Jesus Sanchez does not raise his voice once in this article. And he just goes in on how Real Madrid were at that. And he is not pulling any punches, but at the same time, it's cold, it's clear. And like, you know, Mark is about as pro Real Madrid publication as you're gonna find. Well, pro is probably being harsh, but certainly they know their readers like Real Madrid. So if they're gonna go in in Real Madrid, they know that like, it's something that is not going to get them, you know, a negative reaction or at least a dangerously negative reaction from their readers. And if, the, if Marca is saying this is a disgrace from Real Madrid, they're really saying Real Madrid fans consider this a disgrace as well. So, you know, uh, that's a big, it's a big deal when Marca's writing a piece like Jesus Sanchez. And it's a brilliant piece. I'm linking to it below uh, in, the, in the description, so be sure to read that. The translate function does a great job on it. And so I really couldn't recommend that more. So now we get on to, well, I suppose the third and final part. What happens now? Zok happens now. Because here's the thing. I think that Zelko Abradovic will find a way to minimize whatever impact there is of the absence of punter. Like, I look at this and I kind of go, this is largely the same. Okay, a couple of key additions, but largely the same as Aris Barkas pointed out. Team that lost the Euro Cup final last year. It takes a lot more than being the runner-up in a Euro Cup final to, frankly, dominate a Real Madrid side this deep in talent in Real the way Partizan did. Like, it shows you the impact of Obradovic, and I'm pretty certain every Partizan fan watching this will largely agree with me that Zelko Obradovic has had a tremendous impact on the side and how it's come along this season. Uh, you know, I think I, I, I'm largely guessing most of the viewers here are going to be Partizan fans here. Uh, you know, it's like, I, I don't follow teams, I follow fans, is how I put it, like, and I love Partizan fans. I also love Vezda fans, so sorry Partizan fans, if that offends you. Uh, but I don't care. Uh, you know, I just love good fan bases, that's my thing. And, yeah, you know, I think Zoc will have a plan. He'll have had a few days to think of it. And he'll find out a way to get through Game 3, get that W in front of the fans in the Stark Arena, and then he's got a couple of weeks to work out, well, how do we minimize the impact of not having Kevin for the semi-final? It'll be that simple. Now, there is a good chance, by the way, and I wouldn't be shocked by this at all, that at some point in those two weeks, EuroLeague has a come-to-mm-hmm moment and realize that maybe it should reassess when Kevin Punter serves that suspension. I've got no inside intel on this. I'm thinking of how every other sports body that's ever existed has operated. And keeping one of your stars out of a game for a team that will bring a lot of fans, and I think it's reasonable to get partisan that you're going to bring a lot of fans to count us. Not ideal. Not the best situation. And if there's a way to do it that doesn't involve that, they might have that come to mm -hmm moment. And yeah, so that's why I think it might happen. I'm, that's, just, that's, just a, that's a hunch. There's nothing to base it on bar my gut. And, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a fat guy, so it's a big gut to think on. And so, yeah, so there is that. But um, personally, I look at the setup now, and it's Partizan versus most likely Barcelona in the semi-final, uh, you know. And Zoc against Saras, which is a fascinating just chess match in its own right. Kind of looking forward to that. Punter or no punter, but I'd rather we had punter. So, to me, 
we should all listen to Shane Larkin. Shane Larkin, who is just a baller, a great baller, and from everything I've ever heard about the dude, a good dude, nice bloke. Shane said very sensible stuff, like I mentioned it earlier in this video. Game three, game four if it happens, but hold if it doesn't happen in game four, game one of next year. Because, like Partizan, you all know yourself, it wasn't like he's comfortably coasted in to the playoffs. Like, you know, as we were last couple of rounds, it was a little bit of sort of work to do, lads, work to do, work to do, and you got there. You earned it, just to be clear. But being down a good player for one game next regular season, it's not nothing. It's a real impact on your side. And your fans would know that. So, yeah, that's it to me. I think it's an impossible situation. I think it's an unfair situation. And I think a better situation is possible. And those are my, well, more than two cents, really. Uh, but, um, yeah, uh, listen, I'm looking forward to watching game two. Game three, sorry. I'm looking forward to y'all bringing the noise. And I expect to see a lot of y'all in Kaunas. And we can have a beer or three. But to help me buy more beers wherever I am in the world, doing basketball stuff, please subscribe. We really need to get up to 1,000 subs. All your support is genuinely appreciated. Thanks so much.